After spending the last seven days traveling across Turkey in a rental car, I put together a guide that has everything you should know if you're planning a road trip across Turkey. Good afternoon guys and welcome to Pamukkale. So today is our seventh day traveling across Turkey in a rental car and because it, today is our very last day with it, I wanted to share my experiences, what it's been like getting a rental car and traveling across the country with it so that you guys have an idea of what to expect. Yours. Very nice. I have a nice one, you say good. Thank you, sir. Bye. So eventually you guys are going to have to fill up at a gas station if you guys are renting a car here in Turkey. Um, typically it's full service but as you just saw, uh, he just filled up the gas tank for us. Usually they, they clean your windshield and whatnot. You tell the guy how much you want to fill up and you go pay inside usually and then you bring the receipt back to the gas attendant and you give them a receipt to show that you paid uh, for the gasoline. Uh, that's typically how it works here in Turkey. Gasoline will cost you roughly about like 7 lira to 10 lira per liter and we just filled up uh, a full gas of tank here cost me 330 lira when I picked it up from the airport. Now your next question you're going to be asking is how do you rent a car here in Turkey and what is the experience like? Well. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, there are many rental car companies in Turkey and you can absolutely rent some rent a car online. However, we actually flew into Antalya and we literally just showed up at the airport and uh, picked the very first rental car company we saw and rented with them. The company that we chose was Chizgi, I believe is the name of it, how you pronounce it. And we rented it for roughly about 61 US dollars a day and that was with full insurance. It came out to roughly about 430 US dollars total for one week. And uh, so far, it's been an absolutely amazing experience. The car is great, it's very new, it's very modern, and it's getting us where we need to go, and it's very good on fuel, actually. <laughs> Now the only requirements that you need in order to rent the car, at least through the company that we went through, was a driver's license from whatever country you're from. Uh, you need to be over 25 years old and just a copy of your passport as well and payment. That's really it. We didn't even get asked if we had international driver's license, uh, but I did have it on hand just in case they did ask. Now when you guys are driving in Turkey, you should be really careful and cautious with your speed. Typically the speed limits are about 70 kilometers an hour to 110 kilometers an hour if you're driving a regular car. Um, there are multiple checkpoints in and out of each city, so if you plan on doing a cross-country road trip, do expect some checkpoints along the way. Uh, we never got pulled over, but we saw quite a few on the other side of the road. However, a sneaky little trick that the police do like to pull is to put up these cardboard cutouts of police cars out on the middle of a highway. So be on the lookout for them because sometimes they could be fake police cars and sometimes they could be real ones. Now, one thing I love to do when I'm visiting a new country is to learn the local laws. So for example, in Indonesia, if you plan on going straight, you use your hazard lights to indicate to other drivers that you plan on going straight into it uh, through an intersection um, and one thing I learned driving here in Turkey uh, for passing on the highways is that uh, slower cars will typically pull off to the shoulder actually to indicate the cars behind that they can pass if you want to do the same for the car behind you you can just pull off to the shoulder to give room for the car behind so that they can pass you if uh, they're literally riding your bumper so I've had to do that quite a few times on the highway because uh, the cars here go pretty quick. By the way guys, this is our hotel here in Pamukkale. Really beautiful and it only cost us like I believe $40 a night. Now one thing we quickly learned as we were driving from city to city here around Turkey is that parking can be quite a bit of an issue, especially if you're visiting small little cities or here around Turkey. So our trip originally started in Antalya and luckily we didn't have any issues with parking until we got into the city center that is with it being so busy it's summertime here it's peak season so there's many tourists uh, visiting uh, many different cities here around Turkey 
and uh, that was very, very apparent when we were visiting a city called, I believe, Kosh. I've been saying Kos for the last couple of videos, but I think it's pronounced Kosh, as well as Bodrum as well. Those little harbor towns, harbor cities, have a lot of uh, boats coming in, and they're very, very tiny. Like, when you arrive into the city, it almost gives you a feel like you're arriving in Monaco. It feels that small, <laughs> and because of that, there is quite a lot of congestion, a lot of traffic in this in this little tiny city, and there is not a lot of room for park for parking. Even if you have a hotel booked in the city, sometimes the hotels didn't even have parking in front of their hotel either. So you got to be really careful with uh, the cities that you're visiting. Make sure that the hotel that you've chosen has parking. Now the biggest road hazard you guys are going to encounter while you're here in Turkey road tripping or driving around the cities is going to be the taxis. Quite literally, nothing is going to beat the taxis as your road hazard. Uh, the taxis here just drive crazy I cannot just I cannot explain it uh, they are they are fast they will cut you off uh, when we were in Antalya oh my god we had a culture shock with the taxis because they were just flying by everywhere whichever way they wanted to go uh, and a few times cutting us off as well so uh, yeah just be really careful when you're driving around the taxis because they need to get somewhere obviously now if you guys do plan on doing a long distance road trip like we did uh, you're probably going to encounter uh, a few tolls along the way uh, we did encounter one toll the entire seven day trip that we did and uh, that entire cost of that single toll was only 11 lira that's like a dollar 25 us dollars it's ridiculously cheap and passing the toll was really simple really easy there was a attendant there at the toll and we gave her 11 lira in cash and that was literally it and very simple very easy so just have cash on hand guys it's very simple all right guys and one last thing before my camera dies that i have encountered here in turkey that's different from when i drive back home is that when you pull up to a traffic light, it feels like you are about to race somebody because the light doesn't turn from red to green. It goes red, yellow, green, and sometimes even the traffic lights themselves have a countdown timer so you know when it's gonna turn red, yellow, green. So uh, sometimes it feels like when you pull up to a traffic light, uh, the car next to you, you're about to start racing them. Uh, so that was really the only other difference that I have encountered here in Turkey driving renting a car um, overall the experience has been very simple very easy renting a car here just make sure you guys use a reputable company just search for the reviews i will leave the information for the company that we used uh, it was our very first time using them here in turkey overall i think we had a much more enjoyable trip i think here in turkey because we were able to use a rental car it was on the more expensive side though because I think it's peak season here in Turkey. It's uh, a little more expensive uh, because we, uh, we did rent it for $60 a day and that was returning it to the same location. They sometimes even have a one-way fee where you drop it off in another city and that costs an extra 2,000 lira, which uh, I don't even remember the conversion for that. I'll put it down below, but yeah. So this is where I'm gonna leave it off, guys. If you guys found this video helpful, please give it a like. Comment down below any more questions about renting a car here in Turkey, and I'll be happy to answer them. And of course, guys, if you made it to the very end of the video, please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.